So the first step of the Van Giesen stain is to apply the hematoxylin. And for this we use Weigert's hematoxylin, um, which you need to prepare by mixing in equal portions the uh, alcoholic hematoxylin to the ferric chloride. And then give that a good mix. And then because of the relatively high alcohol content within this mixture, it's best to actually stain the slides upside down in a closed petri dish, which does two things. It, it will tend to reduce the amount of evaporation, but if there is any precipitate that's formed, then having the slides facing downwards, then the precipitate tends to fall away from the surface of the tissue. So just dispense that between the glass slide and the petri dish and allow the capillary action to draw that up and then leave that for about 10 minutes. So you can see there just between the slide and the petri dish. So 10 minutes later, we just rinse that off as we would normally do after staining in other hematoxylin solutions. And as before, best to rinse that in the sink rather than straight to, to the smaller bath on the side. Now this type of hematoxylin with the iron mordant is designed to be more resistant to being removed from the tissue under acidic conditions. But we still need to give it just one dip in the acid alcohol, but only one dip, that's quite critical. If we do more than that, um, even despite its resistance to being removed under acidic conditions, uh, we'll lose too much of it when it goes into the Van Giesen solution. So one dip and one dip only. Now, I won't even bother to use microscope control here because I can see that the section has stained even without looking at it down the microscope. And because I physically can't do less than one dip, then I'm assuming this is just about right. Uh, but still blew it, as you can see there, with the dilute ammonia. That's essential to bring out a, a very dark, almost black colour. Then rinse that off in the water bath after being blued. Okay, now the next step is to actually apply the Van Giesen solution. And this is a mixture of two dyes, picric acid and acid fuchsin. And as you can tell from the name, they are both acidic dyes. And so this is where the benefits of the Weigert's hematoxylin comes into play. Two minutes under these acidic conditions, the hematoxylin is, is more stable um, than if we'd say used Ehrlich's. Okay, so here's a couple of pictures of those two dyes. The important thing to note here is the relative difference in size. So the smaller of the two dyes, picric acid, will be able to penetrate essentially most structures fairly, fairly well, whereas the acid fuchsin being a larger dye will tend to form aggregates and be limited more to entering um, areas of lowest density, which is essentially collagen fibres. So if we imagine a, a, a sort of density figure like this shown in the circle, the, um, the, the highest density of protein with uh, smaller pores would be things like red blood cells. The intermediate size would be things like muscle, whether it's skeletal or smooth, or um, keratin within epithelial cells behave similarly. And then finally, the collagen fibres, which is the target of this stain. Okay, so after two minutes, this is the next crucial point. We, there's a tendency to just assume that you rinse stains off, but in this case, we must avoid doing that. So we flick off the excess stain, and using about two to three pieces of filter paper, we place the slide face down, being careful to not move the slide sideways. So I'm always holding this slide firmly. Bit of light pressure on the back of the slide. Open it carefully. 
lift it like a hinge and then just check it carefully to see there's no moisture but there's a few little bits there just wipe that off the back and then just um, check the front of the slide as well there's a couple of tiny bits now we need to get these off now because um, that will reduce as much as possible any water being transferred to the xylene just check the gloves and then straight to the absolute alcohol we must avoid the water because the acid fuchsin will be soluble couple of quick dips in the two absolute alcohols and keeping it brief because the picric acid is soluble in the alcohol and then straight to the xylene then once again with the second slide this one is of skin shake off the excess stain two to three pieces of filter paper face down making a hinge holding it firmly while I form the fold bit of light pressure on the back and then again using my index finger on the left hand to pivot that slide up so there's no sidewards motion checking the back that looks pretty good the label end is also fairly clean so that's good my gloves are also dry couple of quick dips again for this one in the absolute alcohol then to the second so there really should be no traces of water at this stage dab off the excess straight to the xylene leave it for about a minute then transfer it over and then we can go and cover slip so now moving to those slides to have a look here's the skin and it's quite deep down there with the junction between those epithelial cells and the surrounding collagen fibers um, nice dark uh, nuclei which is great so that's the results of just that single dip in the acid alcohol but very good separation of the picric acid in the keratinocytes and red to pink in the surrounding collagen fibers again there's a bit of smooth muscle here staining in a similar way to those keratin rich epithelial cells essentially yellow now switching to the other section which is liver is quite fatty as you can see there at low power lots of lipid um, spaces there but if we go over to the edge here there's a nice big um, piece of connective tissue running through there the hepatocytes themselves are quite yellow with picric acid as is the bile duct a couple of smaller bile ducts there this is a fairly thick section as you can see by the layers of nuclei and some nice bright pink collagen fibers in the connective tissue so that's worked out just right 